Okay, welcome. My name is uh, Colonel Denny Peoples. I'm the uh, Senior Aerospace Instructor here at Prescott Junior ROTC. Uh, I have a three-session uh, YouTube uh, video uh, instructional uh, curriculum via resume was the first one. The uh, last one was instructional on how to conduct an interview. And now is the final session where I actually have a real cadet come in for a uh, mock interview for an Air Force Academy uh, application, except that I'm going to stop him after his, his uh, answers to my questions and I'm going to give him some constructive criticism. This is usually a two-hour session that I have actually done here for Prescott uh, students. Uh, as, as lately, as just this summer, uh, some kids applying to the Naval Academy. Uh, I've also done them last Christmas for some of the Prescott students applying to the Flynn Scholarship, which is the big scholarship here in Arizona. Again, I'm very candid and direct and blunt, so I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm going to crank it out here real quick. Uh, our <laughs> cadet is Cadet Grant Temple. He is actually really applying for the Air Force Academy. He's a very sh sharp individual swimmer. Uh, he's my commander here at Prescott Junior RTC in charge of over 200 cadets. And he's humbled himself <laughs> to uh, go through this and be recorded, so I do appreciate that. By the way, all of the videos can be caught on Prescott J. Rotsey on YouTube anytime you'd like. So let me get this set up, and we'll go through the uh, interview. Okay, Grant, so anytime, uh, come on in. Meet you, Grant. Hello, Grant my name Temple. is Colonel Peebles. What's your name? Uh, Grant. <coughs> hey, Grant, take a seat. You have a resume for me? Go ahead and take a seat, please. Grant, we're going to be interviewing you for the Air Force Academy today. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to videotape you so that you can uh, allow your comments and all to be recorded for you to learn from, as well as for the other students to learn from you. That's fine. If I can get this set up. Okay, Grant, uh, let's see. Uh, this will be a formal Air Force Academy interview, and uh, we'll be looking for you to uh, I'll be taking notes the whole time that you'll be talking so that I can remember this stuff and, and record this online uh, as an interview process for the Air Force Academy, which will be reviewing this 4060 interview and documenting it for your application. How about tell me about yourself? What are you, uh, where were you born and, and how did you end up here in Prescott? <clears throat> well, I was born here at Yapai Regional Medical Center. Um, I'm 18 years old. I've been here my whole life. I live down in um, Diamond Valley, right in between Prescott and Prescott Valley, and I grew up on a farm there. My parents run a, a bed and breakfast, so I've been around animals my whole life, and um, I'm a senior here at Prescott High School now, and I'm applying to the Air Force Academy, so that's why I'm here. Great. How about tell me about some of your hobbies? What do you do? Well, when I, I started swimming competitively when I was 11 years old, so that's been the major hobby of my life every day since I was 11. Otherwise, I also enjoy target shooting. I enjoy, um, I enjoy video games, like probably most teenage boys these days. Um, they're basically just staying fit and active, helping out in my community in any way I can. Okay, Grant, that was an A. <laughs> okay, okay, you did real good on that. That's called the softball question. Okay, that's okay. what the interviewer will do to get you relaxed. Yeah. Except that you don't look relaxed because you are nervous, you're being videotaped. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my only suggestion for that whole exchange is you try to smile once. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll as smile a teacher, once. you've heard me say, as a teacher or a public speaker, if you, make, if you can look in the in eyes of everybody and make them smile, you have them. You're looking me in the eye, so you're doing great. That was an A, okay? okay. The only A plus is to give us a smile, just like I made you laugh and smile there, and that relaxed you a little bit. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so if you can do that some way, and also maybe use your hands. Hey, I spent all this time around animals, you know. And, uh, okay, that's okay. very good, very good. All right, so what they'll do is they'll ask you some softball questions just like we did here 
and uh, you did a you you had a very good response. Okay. And then most interviews will come around to why you're here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me about uh, your desire to go to the Air Force Academy. Why do you want to go to the Air Force Academy? Well, when I was growing up as a little kid, I had the stereotypical construction worker, race car driver, professional athlete. And when I got into sixth grade, I really started to think about what I wanted to do with my life. And um, my, that summer, my cousin Ty, who's in the Navy, came over. And he opened up my eyes to the military and being a military officer. So ever since sixth grade, I knew I wanted to be a military officer. And fly, I was really interested in flying. So I thought maybe I'd want to be a military pilot someday. And so I looked into the options in how to become a military pilot. And I found the academy. And... So I applied to it this year. Okay, what do you want to major in the academy? I want to ma ma well, since I've been doing swimming my whole life, I've, I've kind of wanted to look into management and coaching, like sports medicine, and because maybe one day I'd want to coach my own swim team. So what do you want to do in the Air Force? I want to be a military pilot. Okay, I'm giving you suggestion, instructional now. Okay. That was a B. Okay. okay. You had an answer, which was good, mm -hmm. but right now, this generation of, of military applicants you need to be a engineer, a medical profession, or okay. a linguist. Okay. Okay. So my suggestion to you is not to be a sports workout PE okay. teacher or whatever you just said. Okay. Civil engineering. So you, your answer okay. is you need to be an engineer. Okay. So my suggestion to you is to say, sir, I'd like to be a civil engineer, and just okay. leave it as that. Yes, sir. Okay? And one of the rationales is civil and mechanical or kind of more generic engineering, and from that you go and specify, you know, whatever your passion is. Mm -hmm. I'm a civil engineer, okay? Yeah. I ended up being a fighter pilot. Yeah. I can't tell my junior, or my ROTC colonel that oh, I don't, don't want to go to college and major in anything to be a flight pilot. That's basically what you just said. Mm -hmm. Don't say that, okay? Mm -hmm. Say you're going to be an engineer, and then I'd like to serve the country if they let me by, you know, flying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But you need to be in today's world, engineering, medical, or linguistics. Yes, sir. Do you speak any languages? No, sir. I took Japanese one, two, and three, four, but um, I didn't pursue it any further than that. So you've taken two two years. Yes, sir. So I would not say no, sir. I would respond, well, sir, I really am interested in Jap Japanese. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And consequently, uh, at my school, it only offers two years of it. Okay. That's a positive way to do it. Yeah, I mean. Sense. Okay, so now we get into more of the medium <coughs> questions, okay? And let me give you a hint about in top level interviews. When I give you a question, you answer directly, which you've got a great conversational point, you're, you're, you're responding exactly right. But you always want to answer on an upswing. Okay, think about what I'm saying. So I'm going to give you some tougher questions, okay. but you want to answer on an upswing. Let me give you the perfect example. Okay. Uh, I asked one of my previous applicants, a female who did end up going to the Air Force Academy. She's an Air Force officer. She was sitting in my office. I said, uh, tell me something that you have worked hard for all your life mm -hmm. and you failed miserably and what did you learn? And that's a tough question. That, yeah, that should be tough. towards the end of the interview. Uh -huh. and that is an adult level <clears throat> question. That's what you should get as an adult for <clears throat> tough interviews. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, do you mind if I think about it? Which showed me she was mature enough to, to not rush into any kind of answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she actually uh, took down and, and answered her. We're online, please. Go ahead and back and give that to Colleen. Okay, so what you need to do is actually uh, think about the question. So her, an her qu answer was that she was a soccer player, mm -hmm. and she was on the state team, and actually uh, my, uh, commuted down to Phoenix for over three years, two hours a day, five days a week. Mm -hmm. And so she played on the state team. She was good here, but she was average in Phoenix. Yes, sir. She traveled all around America and sat on the bench. She worked really hard just to go to Phoenix and sit on the bench. And so that was the answer to her question. She had failed miserably. Mm -hmm. But, but, then she says, I was sitting on the bench in St. Louis when this guy came up to start talking to me. He said, your name is Heather Watts, and you play basketball, excuse me, soccer. 
and would you like to go to the Air Force Academy? Mm -hmm. So there was her answer that she tried really hard, she failed miserably, but because she failed and traveled all around the world, all around the nation, she got recognized as a smart kid who was an athletic kid. Mm -hmm. And consequently, she went to the Air Force Academy and got a $400,000 scholarship. Yes, so you see how the upswing at the end. So yes, I'm going to challenge you to every one of these questions. You need to have an upswing at the end, which is positive. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay? All right. Uh, what event in your life has been the greatest challenge to you? Well, sir, um, when I was 14 years old, my older brother Alec passed away from a hypoglycemic event in the middle of the night. And I've always been really close to my brother. And when this happened, it, it was very unexpected. Um, my brother has had seizures his whole life, and we, they've always turned out okay. And I'm, I have the room next to him, so I would always hear him start to have a seizure, and I'd wake up and go get my parents, and everything would be all right. But when he passed away that night, it was a shock to all of us. And after that, I had to assume the responsibilities of being an older sibling in my family. And I really had to adjust to a new life of being able to be the new role model to my brother and sister now because my brother wasn't there. And so this has been a real challenge for me to be able to take this from the right way and be the best person just like my brother was. Good, good. That was a good answer. Uh, tell me about uh, where you see yourself 20 years from now. Well, sir, um, I think I would like to make a career out of the military. So 20 years from now, I would still like to be in the active military serving my country. Uh, if your flying world does not work out, what can you see yourself doing in the military? I would like to be an engineer in the military someday, um, possibly building bridges, something like that involving civil engineering. Okay, that's a good answer. That was a C. Yeah. <laughs> what you need to do is research that and come up with a little more specific stuff. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And specifically in the in the engineering world, uh, in the Air Force, civil engineers. They don't build bridges. <laughs> don't build bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of what engineers are like bridges, Grant. Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I put you on the spot. That's yeah. Why we're doing this. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one of the one of the tenets of the Air Force Academy is the Air Force Academy Honor Code. Are you familiar with that? Yes, sir. What is it? It's service before self, excellence in all we do, and integrity first. Okay, great answer, but it's wrong. Okay. Those are the Air Force core values. Okay. Okay. And so I'm glad you brought that up. Those are mm -hmm. the core values. Tell me which one of those resonates with you. And then why does it mean something to you? Probably service, service before self resonates with me most. Um, I feel like human beings get more joy out of helping others than helping yourself. And that's a way I've really tried to model my life is by helping others in any way I can in order to improve my life. Okay, that was an A-plus answer. Okay. No, that was an A answer. Okay. An A-plus answer <laughs> is where you give one example of what you just did. Mm -hmm. So give me one example. So um, take example, um, when the Yarnell 19 passed away, um, I had a very busy day that day, and there was going to be a candlelight vigil the next one. And um, I already had things planned for that evening, but I was asked by the organizer of the Hotshot Memorial Service to conduct a color guard that evening. And so... I went past doing what I wanted to do and organized four people in junior ROTC to show up that evening unexpectedly to perform a color guard. Okay, that made it an A plus answer. And I would probably say at the end. You um, should have said, as commander of the uh -huh. junior ROTC unit, I felt responsible to do something. Yeah, and then I would say how like that made me that made me m much more happy and hum humble than doing something that I wanted to do. Service before self. Yeah. Okay, that was an A plus answer. That was great. <clears throat> the honor code is I will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Okay. So let's say your first year in the Air Force Academy, you're accepted, and you have your best friend as your roommate because you're going through all this together, mm -hmm. and you realize around Thanksgiving that your best friend has been cheating on his math test. What do you do? Well, being a cadet at the Air Force Academy, every cadet is expected to 
follow the honor code. And um, I would have the obligation of order to let somebody know, nevertheless, if he's my best friend or not, because frankly, he wouldn't deserve to be there if he's been cheating the whole time. So and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to associate myself with someone who's been doing that. So how are you going to handle it? I would, first, I would let my friend know, listen, this isn't right. You need to stop now. And if he continued on doing it, I would let somebody know. I would, who would you let know? Um, whoever's, whoever the appropriate person is in my squadron. Probably um, a senior cadet and ask him for advice on what he would do. Okay, hold it. We have some technical difficulties here. What if your roommate says, hey, you're coming to New Hampshire with me on my dad's private jet for Thanksgiving. What do you mean you're going to turn me in? What are you going to do? Um, well, Colonel, I, I, that wouldn't matter to me because he's violating the Air Force Academy Honor Code, and, and I wouldn't want to be friends with somebody who's doing that. Okay, that's a good answer. That's an A. Okay. Do well there. Um, what is, I'm looking at your resume here. I appreciate you bringing me in. Uh, tell me about your favorite classes in school and why is it your favorite classes? I enjoy uh, math and science a lot. I've always been pretty, well, pretty good at it. So um, I think that's the same with everyone. Whatever they're good at, they enjoy most in school. So I enjoy math and science, and I'm in math club, and I enjoy AP biology. What's your least favorite subject and why? English, because I'm not the greatest at English. Um, I do I do like writing papers that I'm able to connect with, and but I, I've never really been that great at English, so that would probably be my least favorite. Uh, tell me about uh, what you feel a military academy has to offer you that a civilian academy does not. Well, um, I think service academies do their best to set you up to succeed. I think that an academy does everything in their power in order to help you achieve the dreams that you want. And that's what I really like about military academies is that if you're struggling, then they'll assign you a tutor to help you. And say if I had a swim meet and I wasn't doing well in math, they would actually bring one of the math teachers on the flight with you to tutor you on the way down. And I think that's, that's fantastic that they'll do everything in their power in order to help you succeed, that you have that support system that a civilian academy wouldn't. OK, that's about a B answer, OK? okay? Because I'm sure that a lot of the civilian academies have tutors, civilian schools have tutors and helpers if you want them, mm -hmm. OK? What you might want to get into is that being around, being immersed is a good word, mm -hmm. around like-minded people mm -hmm. who are willing to sacrifice some of their creature comforts <laughs> and futures to serve their country. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a attitude of everyone there about service I and see. dedicating your life to something bigger than yourself. Okay, that's not common at a civilian school. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, what do you think is the difference? I see on your resume here that you've been the uh, junior ROTC commander at Prescott High School. Can you tell me about uh, an experience there that you uh, were challenged by and you learned something? <clears throat> okay. Um, well, my junior year, I was the operations squadron commander, and that's a pretty work-intensive job. Um, in that job, you have to organize all the flight commanders and flight sergeants and bring them into a meeting at the beginning of the year. And at the beginning of the year, everything's <clears throat> very hectic, and it's hard to get a hold of people. And flight commanders, flight sergeants are constantly changing. And this was an experience that really helped my leadership abilities and public, public speaking in order to go find all my flight commanders and flight sergeants on my own and make sure that they all show up to this meeting. What did you learn? I learned that, um, that you can't always trust everybody. Um, what I mean by that is you can ask them to come, but you don't know that they'll come. So 
there's certain ways that you're able to to convince them to that they want to be there because I know a lot of them really didn't want to t sacrifice one of their Wednesday afternoons to come in after school for two hours and learn about leadership but for instance if you bring pizza or <coughs> cake or some sort of motivator in order to make it more fun for them to show up that was probably the biggest thing I learned in that experience is, is find ways to motivate people to do something that they don't want to. Tell me about uh, a uh, something you worked really hard on and, and succeeded and what did you learn from that? Well, w like I said, I started competitively swimming when I was 11 years old and I didn't know how well I was going to do at this sport and it ended up I started to win some races and every year we have a state championship swim meet that every swimmer trains for the entire year round. So when I got into high school, I thought, okay, th this year's my year. I want to win a state championship. So. I woke up at five in the morning every morning, went and swam for two hours, got done with school, and then swam for another two hours. And I did this for six months straight going up to um, state. And when it came around to it, I ended up winning by three tenths of a second right in front of the guy who beat me the last year. And that, that was a really exciting experience because not because I won, but I knew that it was because of all the hard work I put in for that six months in order to win. Okay, great. That, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. You see how you answered it, and then at the very end, you talked about what you learned to make yourself uh -huh. a better person? Yeah. Okay, so then conversely, tell me about something you worked really, really hard on, and you failed miserably, and what did you learn? Can I think about it for a second? Sure. Well, um, last year, as um, Junior RTC Operations Squadron Commander, I organized a field day. And I worked for a few months making the field, making the field day possible, inviting the entire unit, making streamers, organizing events. And I ended up failing in the end because I didn't show up to my own event. And I learned a very valuable lesson there that if you're going to take on something head on, and you got to make sure that you're actually going to be there. Even though I organized it all and I felt like I deserved the credit of, of making that event successful, the fact that I wasn't there was, um, I, I think I failed in that, that way. Well, what did you learn? <clears throat> I learned that if you're going to, if you t tell somebody that you're going to take on an event and you're going to plan it and organize it, that you need to be there. And you need to make that commitment because even if something comes up in the short run, you've already made the commitment to that event. You need to make sure that you will be there. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. How about uh, tell me about a world event that's going on, line on now, and what would you evaluate our leaders' actions from this country? Well, um, as you, I'm sure you know, um, Bashar al-Assad is using chemical weapons against his people and our president, President Obama, has been faced with the challenge of whether to take U.S. military action against him because he's violating U.N. rules with killing innocent civilians with, with chemical weapons. And um, I feel that our leaders needed to take more serious action much quicker rather than delaying it on as, as as much as they could. I feel that our president needed to make the decision the second he found out that civilians were dying by the use of chemical weapons. What do you feel about uh, Russia and China's response to your, your actions? Um, I, I think that the U.S. has such close economic ties to China that really there was nothing that they would be able to because they wouldn't be able to sacrifice that essential relationship with us in order because th th they rely on us just as much as we rely on them for economic reasons. And um, the U.S. taking military action against Syria, I don't think there's much that they could have done. Okay, that was an A answer, A okay. plus. It's obvious you're talking about that, I assume, in government. A little bit, yeah. But that was a great <clears throat> answer, okay? And to be honest, I've usually had students trip up on the current event question. Mm -hmm. That was great, Grant. 
Okay. The reality is, like tomorrow, when I go to Flagstaff, I'm going to ask the cadets about the government shutdown, mm -hmm. which is topical, mm -hmm. but it's sort of out of the news right now relative to Syria. Yeah. So if you go through these interviews the next week or two, I would study. Tell out me home. about your opinion about the government shutdown. What would you do to solve it if you were uh, Mr. Senator Boehner or President Obama? What would you do? Um, I think that um, Congress needs to have more of a, a deadline in order to make decisions. Um, with no <coughs> deadlines in place, Congress is able to prolong making decisions as long as they need to, and they end up coming up to coming up to the debt ceiling, and they, they don't ever make a decision, and there's a government shutdown. So I think if deadlines are put in place beforehand where decisions need to, make, need to be made here, here, and here, that way um, we, we won't come up to this kind of crisis again when Congress has to make decisions by a certain time. Well, they've already messed up. What do they do right now? You're President Obama. What do you do? You have a government <coughs> shutdown. You have people not getting paid. What, they said Washington, D.C. is losing $2 million, $200 million a day to the income? What would you do? Um, I honestly, I have no idea what he could do. Um, I'm not. I would call Congress together. And I would um, tell them that there, there has to be something done or we're going to dig a deeper and deeper hole and we just threw in a, a bunch of dynamite and we need to find some way to climb out of this hole. And the way that Congress is working right now, that that's not going to be able to happen. So I would call every a state of the union and bring all the government officials together into one room and knock it out in one day and figure out what needs to be done in order to solve this government shutdown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little rough. I just put you on the spot. Yeah. I tried to find something that you did not know about. Yeah. And I put you on the spot and I let you stew. A good interviewer will let you do that. Okay. To see what you're made of. You went from an F answer to a B answer. Okay. B plus answer. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Your F answer is... You can say, I don't know, uh -huh. but we're looking for you to think innovatively like the leaders of America, okay? Uh -huh. And the bottom line is whenever there's a conflict, personal, even in your family or, or professional, the way to get out of the conflict is to talk. Mm -hmm. And so your answer was correct that, I mean, in my opinion, that if there's ever any conflict, you need to talk. Mm -hmm. So call everybody together and talk. That's what I would do. Okay. Then guess what? That's what they're not doing right this second. <laughs> I yeah. bet they'll do it by the end of the day. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that, that was great. And so a, uh, a tough interviewer will put the person on the spot, let them stew, and see what they come up with. Okay. Okay. If they just simply disengage, you keep, you keep saying, well, I don't know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The person can't think, and I'm looking for some kind of answer at all. See how you think, okay? Yeah. All right. So you did real well coming out of that. That was good on you. What does the word integrity mean to you? It means always telling the truth no matter what kind of implications it has on you. Meaning if you cheated on something or you stole something or you betrayed somebody, then the best thing to do is to let them know no matter what is going to happen to you because I think in the end, whenever you tell the truth, it's always going to turn out for the better. Give an example of when your integrity was challenged and what did you do and how did you, how'd you work it out? Do you mind if I thought about it for a second? Sure. <clears throat> um, when I was just a few years ago, I was doing some, I was helping out one of our neighbors and doing yard work for them every Saturday. It was a, it's an elderly person in my community. And um, I was getting paid for this. My dad would pay me every, every Saturday and one of the Saturdays, my dad was out of town, and so I thought that I would be able to get away with not doing any yard work and telling him, yeah, Dad, I, I went and mowed the lawn this afternoon. Uh, where's my $5? And so I ended up not going over and mowing the lawn that day, and my dad came home that evening, and he asked me how, how my day went, and I was like, yeah, I went and uh, mowed Miss Smith's lawn. Um, 
it, it looks good. And he was like, okay, uh, well, let's go look at it. And we went up there, and he ended up finding out that I didn't mow the lawn that afternoon. And that was a, a real learning curve for me because then he, he knew that I would, I would try to test him in that way. And, and that really tested my integrity and, and made me want to be more truthful in the future. Good. That's a great answer. Okay. okay, that's an A. What are your priorities in life? What do you really care about? My priorities in life would, one, be my family. Um, I care very much about my family, and I would, I would do anything for any one of them. Um, second would be my country. Um, I remember watching this television show one day, and they posed the question if say if I'm Democratic and I have a Republican president and somebody was about to shoot the president, would you, would you take the bullet for him? And I feel like the answer for every citizen in the United States would, should be yes, because just the fact that he's the president of the United States, you have that responsibility in order to protect your country. And no matter what your, what your feelings are in him, he's, he's the commander in chief of the armed forces and he's, essential to running this country and I feel like the answer should always be yes. So serving my country would be my second priority. My third priority would be um, doing whatever makes you happy. Uh, happiness is why we're here, is why we're alive and um, being happy is something that that's really important and if you're depressed you're not going to have a good life. So. Okay, great. Yeah, I kind of stumbled <laughs> on that one. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. You, might, you might want to stop at the second point. Yeah, I'll stop okay. at the second point next Unless time. Unless you think through it. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. If you're thinking hard, and, and when I can tell you're thinking hard, you don't look at the guy, which is totally normal. Uh -huh. That's a good answer. That was, a, that was an honest from the heart answer. Okay. Uh, when someone gives you a complex project to do, do you like to work as an individual or a group, and why? Um, well, I think... Being a, a swimmer and my sport, su the success of my athletic ability relies solely on me. I've kind of grown this mentality to, to want to take things on by myself because I'm able to control the success of the project and I don't have to rely on others. But um, once I got into junior ROTC and we have these huge goals that we need to accomplish, it's, it's literally impossible for one person alone in, in order to accomplish it. So it's really helped teach me how to work in groups and in order to uh, accomplish a common interest using others and, and not just yourself. That was an A answer. Okay. You, you see how you, that was a perfect answer. You start off individually with your history, mm -hmm. you decided how sometimes you can't achieve it, mm -hmm. and then you ended up on the upswing. Okay. That was about one of your best answers. Okay. That, and that showed your experience of what you learned. Mm -hmm. In an interview, it's important to be humble. Mm -hmm. you're not, you don't have the job. You don't have the appointment at the academy. Mm -hmm. But you, it's always good, especially on old people, to admit that you've learned stuff. Yeah. Because a lot of kids have the ego that they're, they know everything. Yeah. So that was an excellent answer, Grant. That was good. Um, let's see. I'm looking at your uh, resume here. It doesn't have on here your... GPA or your class rank, what is that? Um, currently, my cumulative GPA is a 3.775. And our high school does not give numbers on our class ranks. They give you percentage, percentiles. And I'm, I'm in the top 10% of our senior class. Uh, tell me about your education, your 12 years of education, and what you would change about it now that you look back on it. Probably um, reading more. A lot of the times when I'm studying for a class, I'll just go to the bold text and look at the definitions and memorize the definitions and then go take my test. And then I realize that there's questions on the test that are in the, the bulk part of the portion of the book that I never read. And so one thing that I would change would reading the entire thing all the way through because I think that helps you get a better look at the big picture of what you're trying to learn rather than there's the specific details that you think you're going to be tested on because learning is learning is really about understanding the big picture of how things work not just the minute details 
Uh, okay, so you talked about the first part of your answer. That was about an average answer. Okay. Okay. The first part of your answer, you talked about how you do read the bold, bold things, and you wish you read the details. Mm -hmm. At the end, you said learning is about the big thing and the big details. So you see how you went around in a circle there? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, how would you improve your education? Reading more is, is a good answer, mm -hmm. but just articulate it more, more logically. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And again, humbly, uh, I, I think that a good answer for today's generation uh, might be that the time spent on social media might not prepare yourself for the rigors of a top-level school as much as people think. Yeah. So there's my next question is with a top tier school of America that you're applying for, mm -hmm. tell me how your senior year is preparing you for the rigors of what you expect, and what do you think would be the toughest thing for you at the Air Force Academy? Um, probably in order to prepare of applying for such a rigorous school, I took a very rigorous course load my senior year. A lot of the times, going in freshman year, I was excited for senior years, thinking that I was going to take four classes, get out at 12.40, and go swim, and then go home. And once it got around to sophomore, junior year, I realized that I needed to take a full schedule all four years of high school. Because when an, when an academy sees that you only take four easy, mediocre classes your senior year, they realize that that you, you've gotten senioritis and you may not be pre prepared for the type of stress that the academy is going to put you through. And that brings me on to my next answer is the academy, you, you're you immersed in so many different, um, so many different things. So, like you, you have to be a part of an athletic team, whether it's intercollegiate or, or um, what's, what's the other one? Uh, intercollegiate or, or a club. Or yeah, or a club sport. And... On top of that, you have leadership responsibilities, and on top of that, you also have your schoolwork. So they make you manage so many different things at once. It, it's a very stressful atmosphere. And so I try to put myself in the most stressful atmosphere in my senior year by taking three AP courses along with two college classes in order to help prepare me for the academy. Great. That was a good answer. That was a good answer. That was, uh, make, make sure you emphasize also your commitment to the sports. Yeah. Yeah, so you're mm -hmm. doing academic, you're doing leadership, and you're doing athletic. And mm -hmm. that's what it takes to get in the Air Force Academy. Okay. okay. Uh, tell me about your family. And were they were ever in the military? Uh, my dad, he went to New Mexico Military Institute for two years, but then his family ended up moving. So he never, he never went into the active military, but he's had a little bit of a military background. Otherwise, my grandfather fought in World War II, and my great uncle was a fighter pilot in World War I. So what do they think about you getting into the Air Force Academy and going away to college? My, my grandpa is, is, is stoked about it. Um, my, my uncle actually, he, he taught at the academy for, for a few years. He was enlisted and he, I think he actually taught at the prep school. And so I told him that I'm thinking about applying to the academy and he was very happy about it. And they all supported me 100% on wanting to go there. So they realize that they will not be able to see you for the first few months at all? Yes, sir. They understand that. Okay. And you are familiar with the drug and alcohol abuse form? Yes, sir. In fact, have you already accomplished that? Yes, sir. That's submitted. Okay. And you also are familiar with the Air Force Academy tattoo policy? Yes, sir. Okay. That if you get accepted to the academy and you go out and have fun and party and mm -hmm. get a tattoo, that might mean you can lose a $400,000 scholarship. Yes, sir. And also, if you get into the academy, and you celebrate with your brand new girlfriend, and you go out and drink beer or whatever, mm -hmm. that you can lose a $400,000 scholarship and be in debt to the American government for the money that you fraudulently obtained because you lied. Yes, sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. So if you go into the Air Force Academy and drink beer and get caught and get in trouble or, or turn yourself in, you realize you might have to go into the Air Force and be an enlisted member to pay back the military. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Are you willing to do that? Absolutely. Yeah, I think the the benefits of graduating from the academy far outweigh all the fun that you could be having while you're there. And I would never want to risk anything like that. Um, I would never want to risk anything like that by 
making a stupid decision while I'm at the academy. Okay. Uh, tell me about peer pressure. Tell me about a situation in your family or your, your school where you face <coughs> peer pressure and give me two examples. One where you succumbed to it and did the wrong thing. Okay. And one that you stood up and you did the right thing. Okay. Um, well, one example of peer pressure that I've succumbed to would be at my state swim meet two years ago where our coach told us that, um, that we have to stay at the hotel, we can't leave. Um, and once we got back, we had to stay in our rooms and wake up the next morning for breakfast and then go to our meet. And it was around 11 o'clock at night and all me and my swimming buds were still up and we wanted to go to the hot tub because we knew that there were gonna be swimming girls over there and all of that. And so we decided- Swimming, swimming girls. Yeah, there were, there, there were members of the other team and they were out at the pool that night. And so we wanted to go hang out with them. And so we decided to leave our, leave our hotel room and, and go swimming. And our coach never found out, but I, I knew in the back of my head that we should have stayed in our room, went to bed and woke up for the meet because that was what we were there for. We weren't there to go flirt with girls. We were there to succeed at swimming. And my friends convinced me to end up leaving our hotel room and go hang out with them instead of staying in the room. What did you learn from that? I learned that I didn't get much sleep that night and I didn't do well in my races the next morning and the best decision would have been to stay in my room. And, this, and we, we lied to our coach and that's not, nothing you ever want to do also. Tell me about something where you did not succumb to peer pressure. Okay. Um, Let me think about it for a second. Uh, when I went into high school my freshman year, it's, it's a completely new atmosphere and you kind of you lose all of your friends from eighth grade that you've been with for three years and you're immersed into a new population of people that you don't know and you have to make new friends. And sometimes you get involved in the wrong crowd without thinking about it first. And um, I made friends that weren't making good decisions in high school. They, they thought that high school was all about partying and, and having as many boyfriends and girlfriends as you can and drinking and um, I, I immersed myself in the wrong population my freshman year of high school, and I was invited to go to a party one Saturday evening um, by three of my best friends that year. And, and I asked them, well, is this like a birthday party or is this a high school party? And they said, well, it's a high school party. It's going to be fun. You should come. And um, I ended up making an excuse that um, I had swim practice the next morning and I wouldn't be able to come with them. And I... They, they weren't my friends for much long after that. What did you learn from that? I learned that if I could have gone to that party, something really bad could have happened and I could have changed my life. I, making a bad decision like that changes the rest of your life and that two hours of fun isn't worth changing the rest of your life in a negative way. Okay, great. Uh, those were both good answers. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are B's, A's. Those are really good. It's from the heart, and that's a, that was a tough adult level question. Uh, typically, in an adult level interview, they'll tell you, say, talk about your work environment, mm -hmm. where you've seen friends make a bad decision. What did you think about it? Mm -hmm. What did you do about it? Uh, but this, of course, is peer pressure from high school, college level. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so this concludes the Air Force Academy interview. Uh, do you have any any questions for me, sir? Uh, no, sir. You just failed that. Okay, I do have a question. <laughs> uh, you just failed that. I was going to ask you um, what you think the, the best thing that I can do right now in order to help increase my chances of getting into the academy. Do great on your grades for the classes you're taking right now. Make sure you update any pertinent events or test scores or grades <laughs> in your academy so they have it all the way to the end. 
okay? <coughs> and uh, continue to do what you're doing. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, you still failed. Okay. okay. Whenever you go to an interview, <laughs> you always want to you want to ask the interviewer one question about themselves, ideally, and then one question about the organization. So ideally, you would have Googled my name and found me and realized that I've been in the military. Of course, anybody interviewing you for the military will have been in the military, and ask them a pertinent question about their career, such as. Sir, did you go to the Air Force Academy? Sir, how was your college experience about? Tell me about your best memory in your mm -hmm. military career. Why did you stay in for 30 years and become a colonel? That's the okay. type of question I want to ask. And also about the Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. such as, have you ever known any, uh, any of your applicants to, to not make it through the Air Force Academy and why? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty solid question. Yeah. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Because it's, yeah. it's challenging. Mm -hmm. And in general, I've had... Uh, <clears throat> I've had three of my applicants not make it through. One, because they, they hurt themselves, they were sick the first summer and just couldn't physically and mentally make it through. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one was had, uh, had boyfriend issues the junior year and got kicked out mm -hmm. because they probably drank and partied too much. Yeah. Okay? And they owe the military back, they're still in debt, a few hundred thousand dollars. And then the other one uh, was academics, they couldn't make it through academically. Uh, if they, if you make good decisions and you just can't academically make it through the academy, you generally don't owe the money. Mm -hmm. but if you make poor decisions, you certainly will owe the money. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> All right. So this concludes the interview, and so you stand up. I keep your resume, and I shake your hand. I say, "Great, you should squeeze harder." There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody, give a round of applause.